North East Tonight brought to you by Oil India Limited conquering newer horizons Welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is arriving in Kokrajhar tomorrow to celebrate the just concluded Bodo Accord with the masses in Assam's Bodo heartland. The, this accord is indeed unique as all the remaining Bodo insurgent groups are signatories to the peace agreement, as also the leading student group in the area, the All Bodo Students' Union and a civil society body, the United Bodo People's Organization. How were so many groups and organizations brought together and made to reach a consensus before signing on the dotted lines? The role of the All Bodo Students' Union had been critical in cementing together the four NDFB factions. But what is significant is that the APSU too has become a signatory. The UBPO aside, there were individuals as well who played key roles in facilitating the deal. The focus now will be on the implementation of the accord and the politics that is bound to unfold in the Borderland Territorial Region, which is the new name. Viewers, joining live with me from Kukrajhar are two bright young men who flew into Myanmar to talk and accompany the NDFB Swaragra cadres back to India on December the 10th. Yes, joining me are key facilitators of the Bodo Accord, Tulunga Basumatari, an IIT Madras graduate, and Rajkumar Prithviraj Narayan Dev Mach, the 19th descendant of Bodo King Chikra Mash. Also on the debate, Ulfa General Secretary Anup Chetia, political analyst Swapna Nil Barwa, Dr. Prasenjit Biswas from the Northeastern Hill University, and Arunav Goswami, Assistant Director at the Center for Development and Peace Studies, a Guwahati-based research think tank. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. First, let me go to today's man of the moment. That is Tulunga Basumatari and Prithviraj who are joining me live from Kukrajar. I have Tulunga Basumatari uh, on, your, on the left of your screen, and I have Rajkumar Prithviraj Narayan Dev Match, who is a Bodo Royal, the 19th descendant of Bodo King Chikrames. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. First, let me go to you, uh, Prithviraj. Uh, welcome to Northeast tonight. Uh, people would love to know Lots how were these two bright young men from Assam's Bodo heartland, how did the plunge into this peacemaking effort? What brought you to do this? And how could you achieve this most difficult task? Prithviraj first. Lots of thanks, uh, Mr. Wasbir Hussain, for inviting us in your show. As well as we would like to extend our gratefulness and thanks to Welcome. the people of Assam and the peace-loving people of the Borderland region as well. We tried our best with an ambition to keep the integrity of the state of Assam while keeping in view of the integrated, uh, integral part of the Assam with various communities and indigenous sons of the soil who have been doing their relentless movement from long ages. So we, cannot, we thought that we can, can't ignore them as well. Just going in the view of the United Assam, it's not possible unless and until we assure the safeguard of each and every, even big and small, each and every indigenous communities of the state as well. So with that uh, ambition in mind and keeping in that, keeping in that uh, note, we moved ahead uh, towards the Home Ministry of Home Affairs upon the proposal directly received to us by the, uh, from the uh, MDAB Saraigara faction uh, upon the proposal as received from them, we approached towards the Ministry of Home Affairs and we are very much thankful to the PM Narendra Modi and Amit Shah's dynamic Indian government as well as the leadership of uh, Sri Sarmanan Sanwal and as well as the most dynamic leader of Nordis, that's nonetheless Himanta Vishya Sarma, 
for relentless support and coordination in making this peace deal a great sign for the establishment of peace as well as development accelerated by the communal harmony which will be again intensified by the integrity of the Assam which each and every people of Assam do live and dream Absolutely. through their heart. Absolutely. We are very much thankful for that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's an interesting to hear from you, Peter Viraj, and uh, you know, you are a public figure, so there is no harm in disclosing that you have just completed 22, and the state is in safe hands, Priti Viraj. Let me go to you, Tulunga. Yes. Uh, Tulunga Bosomatari, uh, a, a graduate from the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras in Humanities and Social Science. Uh, he, along with Priti Viraj, played a very key role. Tulunga, you know, you said that about how long did you start this initiative? Is it about six to seven months that you, you know, plunge headlong into this peacemaking initiative in the Bodo heartland? How did you start? And uh, before we go into details, tell us, tell my viewers what, how you start, how did it all begin? Okay, uh, where we started uh, studying about the particular issue of uh, Bodo's here, it started with the Bodo's aspiration about protection of their identity, language, and culture. So the, basically, it all started when we drafted the memorandum for other and the big groups, when we monitored how they were negotiating with the government of India and how their demands had been projected in front of the government of India. So while doing all this process, Sarugar affection, brother could uh, get some knowledge about us and our working so he could have some trust on us. So we have been working for this process, not only directly with the Saurigara faction, but with the other NDB factions as well, uh, while dealing with the uh, uh, memorandum settlement uh, with the other government agencies as well. So while doing the process, we got a direct call from Saurigara brother himself, and immediately we moved the proposal to the Ministry of Home Affairs through proper channel and right agencies. And eventually, we could strike the deal with them. Yeah. And now, we had now, to go now, to now, a now you know, to finalize. Tulunga, after, after keeping the Union Home Ministry on yes. the loop, that is the government of India on the loop, you flew, both of you flew into Myanmar uh, via Bangkok. You drove for two to three hours to meet yes. uh, Swaragra and the other leaders. Then you drove back. Uh, tell us something about this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this venture. How how risky was it? How easy or okay, how difficult uh, was it? The, okay, that was uh, a difficult as well as risky journey. But in the same time, we were lucky enough. We had uh, some of the acquaintances from the Myanmar, whom we met along the way with our presence of mind. So uh, when we landed in Bangkok. We met a Burmese lady in airport, and we helped her while coming back to Mandalay since she was a little, a little confused where to go, where not to go. She was not able to find out her defusser, but luckily we were in the same flight. So eventually she told her misadventure and uh, her meeting with us to her daughter, and her daughter called back us, and we had interaction with her, and we thought that this is our first point of contact in Myanmar, so we should take this opportunity ahead. And eventually I called back her and asked for her help in, in Mandalay. So when, when we returned to Mandalay, when we landed in Mandalay, so all the entire day family were, were waiting for us in the airport with their own family car and everything. And okay. after that, we had been taken, we had been taken to their family house. They have provided some good lunch. And, I see. And very some, interesting. Uh, very interesting. You have been lucky. Some cards as well. <laughs> now, 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 <laughs> yeah. Viraj, yeah. yeah, you have been yes. lucky, both of you. Lucky, lucky guys. Lucky boys. Yes. Uh, Viraj, you know, uh, you know, you have it in your DNA. You are the 19th descendant of the Boro King Chikramesh. Mm -hmm. Do you think it is the DNA that activated, got activated? That was some way responsible for you to take this kind of a role. Uh, first of all, uh, before crediting my hard work, as usual everybody credits their hard work, I always believe that if something is 
good and if something is positive then it's the credit of the team and if something is bad and something is not uh, as per our expectation the discredit should go to the person concerned who leads it so we are following that spirit but every time i say that unlike everybody say that it's the credit of hard work at least i can do the hard work only because i got the platform and the platform which i have gotten is only because of the identity which uh, the Bodo people have been traditionally ensuring their love, respect and affection with lots of dedication towards me and their uh, relentless fate upon the identity that uh, Prithviraj won't do anything wrong for the society as well and we should support his move for the greater interest of the community and the society as well. So the identity of being the 19th descendant of the Maharaja Chikra Mes as well as the publicly coronated Bodo Prince drastically helped me out at least to get the platform, to get the identity because identity is very important to extend our hard work. Without a proper identity it would have been very difficult even if we do the hard work but uh, it would have been very difficult that only the hard work would make us reach to the proper destination. Absolutely. Identity also helped Actual, a lot. Absolutely. Viewers, uh, let me also tell you uh, that Priti Viraj is the publicly coronated Bodo Prince at this point in time. So he is not just a royal, he has been publicly coronated as something. He has a standing in the society and he and a, another bright uh, young man from Borderland Tulunga, Basumatari, they played a key role along with, of course, many others, including the All Bodo Students Union in uh, getting this Bodo Accord a reality. Now, we have got other panelists. Let me, let's have everybody on the screen now. Uh, we will discuss the Bodo Accord. How is the road ahead? Uh, Mr. Anup Chetia is with me, the General Secretary of the ULFA. Uh, Mr. Anup Chetia, the two young men, you have heard them. They have played a key role in facilitating the Bodo Accord, it has become a reality. Uh, now, how easy or difficult is the road ahead? Because you are also negotiating with the government of India. What is the lesson learned, lesson that you have learned so far from the Bodo Accord that was signed on the 27th of January? What is the lesson learned so far by you? Up. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thanks to the, these two young chefs, Mr. Tulunga and Mr. Prithiraj, because uh, they have done a very great job uh, in, in, in their very, uh, in this age. And uh, once again, I thanks to them and congratulations to the Boru signatories. Right. Uh, <clears throat> because uh, you see that uh, 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 the talks was beginning with the United Liberation Front of Assam since uh, 2011. And uh, there was uh, three uh, uh, interlocutors who was there. First, there was a PC Haldar. Then uh, he was changed by uh, Dineshwar Singh. And again, uh, uh, right now, this present interlocutor is here. Right. Mr. Uh, now my question Eri to Bakush, you, Matusha. Mr. Anup Chetia, Mr. Anup Chetia, uh, Mr. Anup Chetia, Mr. Anup Chetia uh, kindly look, Mr. Anup Chetia, kindly look uh, straight to the camera. Yeah. Kindly look straight to the camera. My question to you, Mr. Yeah. Anup Chetia, is this. You know, do you think you are now negotiating with the government of India? Your negotiations are at an advanced stage. Do you think that if other individuals and civil society also be a part of your negotiations, do you think it is more useful? Do you think it will be more useful? Or do you think it is too late now for you? Yes. Yes, uh, it is, uh, it is, you are correct because uh, this uh, Boru peoples, they have done a very good job. All the Boru leaders, all the intellectual of Boru community, they came together for the Boru Accord. We also would like to request to the intellectual, all the national uh, indigenous groups, uh, organizations, uh, leaders of the different uh, national and in, in, indigenous organizations to come forward to uh, support us and we, we like to go together to sign a, a, a peace agreement with the government of India. All right. Because this agreement not only for the Alpha people or uh, those who are sacrificed their okay. lives, so not okay. only for now, them, now, but okay. this I, agreement Hold your thoughts, I'm coming back to you, uh, Mr. Anup Chetia. I'll come, I'll come back to you, just hold your thoughts. Uh, now, Prasenjit Biswas, yeah. the recent Bodo Accord, this is absolutely unique. 
in the sense that you know uh, this is a this is first of all it's a comprehensive bodo accord because it has been signed with all the remaining bodo rebel groups all the remaining bodo rebel groups have signed but the most significant factor which i call a master stroke on the part of the facilitators as well as the negotiators is that you know the all bodo students union which has been facilitating trying to cement all the ndfb groups together apart from a bodo civil society they have all become signatories the, we have had the, we have had five to six major accords with insurgents after the mijo accord in 1986 but nowhere we have seen a, a facilitator or a facilitating group like a student group sign, becoming signatories so therefore it is extremely unique do you think that will have a lasting value that adds much more value to this accord than other accords the accord has to be understood in terms of the political process the political process has been to bring certain groups on the table of discussion which happened in 2003 and we had a council there the council had a territory the territory included a large number of non bodo areas and villages now this territory is further extended expanded to include any village or any area where bodos live even kavi anglong where bodos live are supposed to be regarded as scheduled tribe and supposed to get the same kind of facilities or little more than karbis themselves now this creates a certain kind of a small asymmetry yeah. at the micro level at the micro level there is a kind of a rift between bodos and non bodos now what would be more important to see how this accord and its benefits are also extended to non bodos how they are included into it nobody disputes that bodos have their own culture their own right and they should enjoy it to the maximum to the utmost possible way and there should be uh, permanent peace in bodoland but at the same time the okay. non bodo communities also have to be so included now, in this so the point way. you are making prasenjit biswas is that insurgency the cartoons have come down on insurgency in bodo heartland but now there are more issues about local dynamics between bodos and non bodos i will take this question to both my panelists in kokrajhar but before that sopnanil barwa how do you look at the development uh, how, is this bodo accord different from any other peace accord in the northeast well obviously it's very different in the sense that it has included all the people involved in the society to come to a permanent solution and the significant part of it is that once you put your signature into the accord you cannot uh, just uh, you know walk away from what you have signed into it could be even in the point as being a witness even the witness has an importance in the deed right so that way since uh, everyone has signed in the paper it is assumed that everyone is liable towards seeing the accord reach a point of uh, implementation yeah. and not be a reason of discord and therefore it is very important that all of us should uh, ensure that Uh, the accord is implemented and the government takes the responsibility as well as the borough society or the council as it is going to be btr as it is going to be to see that the accord is implemented in full but one point i would like to raise here is that uh, yeah. you know uh, who is going to take the responsibility for implementation of the accord yeah it has not been very clearly delineated in the accord. okay we'll unless you give the yeah. responsibilities or earmark the responsibilities from Obviously, here onwards okay so who will it'll implement the accord that is the key of course it will be the council which with the elective council and the state government will have to implement the accord along with the center i think these are the, and they'll be closely monitored by the state government part of it monitored also. by the signatory because the state government uh, was a witness to the accord the chief minister and the btc chief uh, also as a signatory along with uh, the senior minister kimanta bishwa sharma but uh, arunav goswami your opening remarks uh, before i go back to my panelist in kokrajhar how different is this accord and how easy or difficult is the implementation going to be very quickly yeah i'll just say that uh, as we have already discussed it's kind of unique because of the involvement of the various parties the armed groups the civil society organization the student organizations this kind of organization they for the first time they have all come together and become a witness to this particular accord then and, and when settling this uh, this various issues and clauses of this accord now as we know the state government the central government has been interested with various various uh, 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 yeah. given various clauses of the accord has been implemented by the state government as well as the okay. central we'll government okay we have to we have to wait yeah. and watch how things unfold yeah. uh, now you know uh, tulunga you see now the prime minister is coming tomorrow there is lot of euphoria uh, tell me 
how is the preparation first before I ask you some other questions? How is the preparation? Because you people were also closely involved uh, in the preparation for the prime minister's visit tomorrow. Between three to four lakh people are expected. How is the scene? Okay, uh, all our organizations are working together. It's not, it's not only the political parties, but also the civil society organizations who are working relentlessly for this program to make it successful. All right. Uh, Prithviraj. And during the course of our. Yeah, carry on. Carry on. Carry on, Tulunga. Carry yes. on. Okay, okay. I said during the course of our uh, movement activities, we have learned how to organize such kind of programs so it's not a a difficult task for us. So, Prithviraj, what do you expect from the Prime Minister tomorrow? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, issue. what do you expect from the Prime Minister tomorrow? Because he is addressing a large section of Bodo people. Three to four lakh is a huge population which is gathering in front of the Prime Minister. What would the Bodo people uh, want to hear, according to you? What would they like to hear from the Prime Minister of the country? Well, along with your question, I would also like to answer uh, one suspicion which was uh, ari arisen by the learned uh, uh, panelist in your show itself regarding the non voters also. Actually, the program which the Pri Honorable Prime Minister PM Modi ji is going to attend on the auspicious occasion of tomorrow's, that means the celebration of the historic Bodo Accord, that program is not just going to be attended by some thousands or lakh, one lakh or two lakh of Boro people, that program is going to be attended by lakhs and hundreds of thousands of all the indigenous people, all the people belonging to every each and every communities of this region as well. They are thankful to the Prime Minister, they are welcoming the Prime Minister, they are thankful to the present Central and Assam government because they have seen that their things are being catered and their things are being included which are very much essential to be mentioned. I would request just half a minute to say that there is a provision for the establishment of the UN Brahma Central University. There is a provision for establishment of National Sports University. There is a provision for establishment of Auditorial Museum. There is a provision for establishment of Silarai Cultural uh, Complex. There is a provision for there is a provision for establishment of Birsa Munda Cultural Complex. There is provision for Polytechnic, there is provision for National Institute of Technology at Odalguri as well. These all are, are not meant to be for only the borough people of this place. These all are meant for each and every sections of the people and the entrance, the, all the procedures to get admitted into all these institutions and all the things which are going to benefit the people are not going to judge whether a person is boro or whether a person is not non boro It's going to be judged by the, it's going to be implemented as per the provisions of the Constitution of India. And regarding okay. the uh, apprehension of the non boro sections, first of all, I would like to speak on just a minute, just half a minute, I would yeah. like to speak on that it's, uh, there is no community called, uh, there is no community called non boro but even if we presume and assume that there is certain term called non boro to represent the communities other than the Bodos. I would just like to say that non Bodo people are very much optimistic regarding this accord. But there are some organizations who are very much skeptical regarding this accord. And they are just like pretending to be asleep. It's very hard. Okay. There is a saying in Smith that Hui Thoka Hialog Jogabonwari. There is a saying in Smith. So it's very hard to wake them up since they are pretending but non boro people from this place are very much happy because their ideologies are also being going to be sought as the integrity of Assam is not anymore in question in the present arena. All right. Now, now that is important. Uh, Tulunga, uh, I'm coming to you, Mr. Anup Chetia, uh, exactly after this question. Uh, if we can have Aston's for these two panelists from Kokrajhar, when they speak separately, that will be great for the people to know because they are appearing on TV, our, our channel for the first time. Uh, if you can have Aston's at all points of time when they come on the screen. Uh, anyway, now Tulunga, uh, basically, you know, uh, you know this issue. Uh, what would the people want the prime minister to say? Because we have, we have, we know that the number of seats will be increased from 40 to 60. And, you know, the, the open seats will be anything between 15 to 16 open seats in all, plus six nominated members, so 22. So there will be one third of the seats will be open seats. So there is no apprehension, no cause for apprehension of uh, people who are not bodos. Uh, you know, do you agree with this assessment? Hello. 
cutting off line to cutting off. Okay, uh, Tulunga's line is cut off. Uh, now, now, cut now, uh, Mr. Mr. Anup Chetia, you know, I'll come to you, Tulunga. Uh, once your line is re-established, now Anup Chetia, you know, okay. So Chetia is also dropped. So these are the hazards of working in the northeastern region. Uh, now, Prasenjit Biswas, yeah. Bodo, non-Bodo, is it a genuine threat? Or as Prithvira said, people are not worried, but some organizations are trying to fish in troubled waters. No, I mean, that will be too much to stretch right. this argument. The argument is about equity in political representation. It's not merely participation in certain newly created institutions, but it is also about financial sustainability of these institutions. Okay. Because the accord text says they have to generate internal revenue. Now, no one knows from where this internal revenue is going to come. Now, this critique is important at the very starting point because then the accord can be strengthened. The possibilities of peace can be more well knit and there won't be any bridge between Bodo's and non-Bodo's. Okay, let me, let me take this to Tulunga. Tulunga, you know, you, you, you see, you're saying that there is, uh, the Pritivila yes. has very rightly said that, you know, more than the people, the organizations who are trying to fish in troubled waters. Now, the point is, but how do you deal with this issue right from the beginning? At the end of the day, it is about political representation. Now, the number of seats will be increased from 40 to 60. Now, we are getting to understand, our sources are telling us that the number of open seats could be at 15 to 16, and there will be about six nominated members. So, that will be one third of the 60 seats will be reserved, will be open actually. So, therefore, there is no need for anybody to be worried. Is this correct? Okay, so uh, I would rather shift the matter of matter of the question to the bigger to the bigger level okay. so uh, we can we can shift the matter to the entire Assam what about tribal people's representation in Assam if we look at only in the BTR the proposed BTR so we may missed out the bigger picture of the issue so in the in the end of the day if it is the political representation so we should look at how tribal people's representations are in the entire notice. And if we have to, again, enlarge it to the national level, then again, we have to compare again in that process. So fundamentally, our problem had been uh, development, yeah. economic deprivation, and uh, first apprehension that our language, identity, and culture may be threatened because of the altered demographic uh, scenarios for, uh, okay. that has been happening for the last many decades. Okay. Okay, now, now, Mr. Anup so Chetia. What, what we can see here. Yes, yes, carry on. Tulunga, carry on. I'm, uh, carry on, carry on, Tulunga. Okay, o okay. So the thing is that despite of sovereignty demand, why NDB has stepped down today to a mere borderland territorial region? Or why EPSU has dropped from the demand of a separate state? We can understand it that our aspiration may be in political way. It may be a separate state or maybe a sovereign in some some way. But eventually, it's all about to live as a people with dignity and honor, with our own identity, culture, and freedom of Absolutely. economic expression, cultural Ab expression, Ab and linguistic expression. Absolutely. And, no, let and me as of now, we feel that the recent accord will fulfill us in some way. Recent accord, it, the, the, after all, it's a struggle. Let's have everybody on the screen. It, it, the, the recent accord is an attempt to live in peace and dignity. The accord will provide the opportunity for everybody to live in peace and dignity. Mr. Anup Chetia, yeah. Mr. Anup yeah. Chetia, uh, you know, when we are talking about a re big region where a lot of people live, you see, in the Bodo heartland also, there are a yeah. lot of other communities. Now, Prithviraj is saying that, you know, everybody is happy except some organizations who are maybe politically motivated, maybe they have their own ideas, they have their own interests. Now, now but at the end of the day, we have to have certain concrete measures uh, to assuage, the, to remove the apprehensions of anybody. How important is taking everybody along? Mr. Anup Chetia. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, whatever we got the information from the some indigenous groups uh, who, who is uh, living in the BTC area, 
their fear psychosis also working in their mind because uh, they will deprive from the developments uh, they will deprive uh, from some, some other uh, btr that is, also, that is the fear uh, that is not that is the fear depend upon you are the, saying the present leadership of the btr because uh, they have to look after for the greater carry on yeah that is the fear no because the last last few years they have faced some uh, uh, local problem are also there uh, as as like uh, if some uh, uh, non boru people uh, uh, if they purchase one vehicle or they are going to construct some buildings or like that some uh, boru boys i don't i don't think that some all the boru nations are involved in this case some boru boys young boys they came to the and then demanded some uh, some money or some uh, demands uh, some uh, lump sum also that's uh, that's create a uh, bad situation in that area i like to request to the new generation or new uh, leadership to look after this matter there is some small things because it's created some uh, situation some problems among the minds of the non borus people therefore we always yes pretty fit us yes pretty fit us go ahead non boru organization yeah. like that uh, anup setia hold on that interested persons political interested okay. persons are also walking okay walking all right all right anup setia i'll come back uh, to yeah. you yes pretty fit us you want yeah. to say something pretty yeah. fit us yes go ahead yeah just for a minute i would like to add on yes we know that the terrorism or the extortional activities are not just present in the borderland territorial region or the arstwell btc or the arstwell bodo autonomous council this is very much common in the entire nordeast as well as in the assam and the upper assam or the middle assam as well just like the lower assam has not only just boro boys we cannot tell or regard a community as extortionists or militant there are many uh, fear there are many other organizations also some or some boys of the smis community some boys from other communities are also indulged in various activities in the state of assam for their petty interest like extortion and these all unlawful activities we are very much concerned about this and we being the learned learned youths of this place and we being very much concerned over this place we have relentlessly been trying along with our uh, admin administration we have been trying to diminish the ent- uh, unlawful uh, organizations we have been trying to diminish the banned outfits that was also one of our motive that why we have moved ahead to bring ndfbs or ndfb all groups to the mainstream Absolutely. because we knew that they were also one of the factors uh, to, right. to to continue their movement okay. they had been somehow intentionally or unintentionally involved in some activities right. And, right. but there, that is not only just the case of Bod- borland right. or btd that is also in the that is also seen in the Everywhere. entire state of assam and notice as well trend. with other insurgents like alpha and Abs- absolutely and I, like i love to go for a very quick break but uh, arunav ha, you know how important is it you know the prime minister coming to the bodo heartland within 10 days of signing of the bodo accord that means it has been given absolute importance and priority at the highest level yes of course and you see this 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 shows and not only he's coming here he has also briefed the mps of bjp mps before signing the accord they were briefed by accord that it was signed now he's coming within a fortnight to be a, be a part of the history accord be a part of the arms link ceremony this shows how much the prime minister is giving importance to this particular accord and this particular part of assam and the best part of this is that the territorial integrity of assam has not been Hen, uh, this, uh, dismembered. This, this, this dismembered. Yes. Absolutely. The, uh, 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 can yes, I make absolutely. a point here? Yes, yes, please. Is that you know uh, one thing is very nice that uh, it will give all the opportunity of Boro language and culture to flourish or the Boro community to rise as a whole. But as I, you know, as we have a mixed community there, will it lead to a bit of ghettoization of the whole Boro community vis-a-vis the rest of the community? Will the interaction okay, that is will there? Okay. Will it lead to a ghettoization? This will be the question. Uh, i will be posing to my panelists for a clarity on what they think but after this very short break don't go away i'll be right back
welcome back. I'll go straight to Kokrajhar. Uh, Thulunga Basumatari. Uh, Thulunga, you know, I, I'm coming back to my earlier question. Now all eyes will be to see. Accord has been signed. We all know what the accord contains. Now the the there will be elections in the Borderland. Uh, you know, count for the Bodo Council, Borderland Territorial Region. Uh, whether that will delimitation will obviously not take place so soon. These things are going to happen. But now, what do you think will the Prime Minister say? What will the Bodo people expect the Prime Minister to say tomorrow? What is the expectations among the Bodo masses? Or, or uh, let me not say Bodo, as Prithiviraj has clarified. Let us say that. Le let us. Uh, let us. Uh, uh, what will be the people in BTR expect the Prime Minister to say tomorrow? Okay. Uh, fundamentally, Prime Minister's presence here in BTR is about the resolution of the decades-old border armed conflict with the government of India and government of Assam, and. Uh, what we expect, what the Bodos expect from Prime Minister's presence here is the assurance that the BTR, Bodo Territorial Region Accord, the, which has been termed as the most comprehensive uh, Bodo Accord so far signed, would be implemented in true spirit. And his presence will give us assurance that Bodo Accord will be honored and it will be implemented in due course of time. So, Prithviraj, at the end of the day, it will be a seal of approval yes. from the central government. Is, is that what the prime minister is symbolically going to do? The seal of approval, the final approval and final once more commitment one more time after this accord being signed, attaching full importance, the prime minister flying down all the way to Kokrajhar to meet the Boro people who are absolutely happy with the accord. It will not be just a seal of approval, it will be rather the chapter of approval, I think that. And I also think that uh, tomorrow, it's not about just the Bodo people or other uh, communities, each and every corridors of the society in this region welcoming the Honorable PM of this uh, nation, Sri Narendra Modi ji. But we also rather think that tomorrow's program would also show a political consensus. Tomorrow's program will also bring out the exact prospect of as to how the political consensus of the BTR is going to be, how the comprehensive memorandum of settlement will lead to a dynamic and stable government, government within this region, and how that government will implement okay. the now, uh, various clauses of the accord. Correct. I but think that Prime Minister Modi's visit will uh, create a new, new renaissance in this matter. New renaissance, but, but, but Prithviraj, you know, now, it, no prizes for guessing. Mm. We all know that now the Borderland Territorial mm. Council is being mm. run by one particular political party, that is the Bodo People's Front. They had an absolute monopoly for the, almost a monopoly for the yes. last 17 years. Now, it is the NDFB, yes. it is the, it is a, they have a support of the uh, mm. UPPL, UPPL, United UPPL. Uh, the, Party. Sorry? United Progressive People's Party. E absolutely, United Pro People's Party. United uh, People's Party Liberal. In a UPP Liberal, UPPL, United People's Party Liberal. Now, uh, you know, Govinda Bosumatari was on this program a uh, couple of days back. He said, we, we may not, it may not be necessary for us to hmm. uh, open a political party because we already have a political party which backed us. So now, do you think, you know, politics will come, assume center stage? and implementation may be affected because there'll be brisk politicking because the, the space is the same. The political space is the same. There'll be more players. There'll be more vigorous players now. How do you think the road ahead? Well, most of the people think that it is a, a new structure. Rather, I would like to comment on it that it's just a new structure. It's just a, just the same structure with some replacement to it. But for the replacement, now we have more contenders. 
Yeah. Uh, referring to the very other communities like Naga, the Assamese, and all other, even if we term the usual term as general Bengalis, we can easily, usually see that there have been lots of divisions within their community itself. So being a straightforward speaking person, I would never ever say that uh, there would be unity in the Bodo organizations. It's a very straight thing. But uh, the quality matters than the quantity. But we hope that this time the Bodo Accord is at least the signatories, since they have been very much uh, in good terms with the uh, BJP led uh, state and the uh, center government, uh, union government as well. So I think the center and uh, the state will definitely guide the accordies in such a way that the motto of the center and the state for a uh, peaceful and development uh, region of uh, BTR, as well as the motto and vision of the uh, uh, Bodo Accordies or the Bodo Accord uh, signatories, remain intact. And we hope that in this regard, Sri Sarvanan Sarwal and Himanta Vishwa Sarmaji will definitely guide uh, positively. And no, we, no, we Tulunga and me, we will also relentlessly yes, try. I'll be going that to Mr. Since, Chetia, yeah. I'll be going to Mr. Anup Chetia and Mr. Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, mm -hmm. but uh, Tulunga, uh, the same question to you. Do you think politics will now overshadow many other things, many other critical issues like implementation of the accord, uh, you know, the delimitation of the constituencies, the setting up of the commission and trying to make, you know, the make bring the border majority areas, include those... Uh, people, tribal majority areas, including within the council, non-tribals going out of the council, all these things. Do you think politics will take, dominate now in the days ahead? As far as uh, our internal information, and as we have been leading the matter in the forefront, behind the scene, we are highly well aware that there will be a kind of middle way solution to accommodate the the uh, political political parties as well as other uh, signatories. Can you elaborate? So this is a very important thing you are saying. Tulunga, kind wait. Of arrangement. Tulunga, you are saying a very significant thing. Middle way solution, where all the political parties, whether they supported the accord or became being new, uh, remain neutral, whatever. Do you think there is scope for accommodation for everybody, all the political parties? Do you think? Yes, uh, that can be possible, and the talk has been going on, and it, it will be visible maybe in, in due course of time. Though it may not appear as it is before the election, but definitely we can hope something more comprehensive will come up post-election for the implementation of the accord. All right, uh, let me, let, let's go back to the full screen now. Uh, uh, you know, Anup Chetia, uh, you know, how important is implementation? Do you think what has been your, your thinking? You know, now, now the accord has been signed. Now the critical thing is implementation. Because you have seen the DHD accord, which was hardly implemented. You have seen the UPDS accord in Karbi Anglong. Nobody knows what happened to that. Nobody is aware of what was the gains. Nobody knows what happened to the DHD accord. So therefore, we have examples within the state itself of accords not being implemented. Look at the Assam Accord. 35 years, Clause 6 has not been implemented. 35 years, Assam Accord. Six, 560 yeah. people have died. Six years of agitation. Youths of Assam lost one full academic year. Now, do you think a success of the Bodo Accord will lie in a proper implementation? Do you agree? But uh, I would like to request to the uh, signatories of the Boru Accord, uh, uh, like this time when all the Boru people, all the Boru nation, they are united to, uh, in the time of signing of the Accord. Uh, like that, uh, the, for the impl implementation of the Accord, all Boru nation should be united and they, uh, they go together to implement to the Accord. Otherwise, like that, we have a, we have a uh, uh, experience last uh, from Assam Accord and from a DSD Accord also. It is not properly implemented. Pro implemented implementation is a most important uh, important thing for the new uh, for the future. Therefore, I'd like to request to the, all the signatories parties, they should be together to go together, and they, they demanded to the government of India to properly implement and properly rehabilitation of the uh, of the of the cadres 
of the NDFB. All the cadres should be properly rehabilitated, and uh, uh, they are uh, those who are supporters, and uh, those cases are uh, uh, against these uh, cadres. They should be uh, withdrawn, or they should be uh, 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 what is called how to uh, withdraw or how to finish their cases. That's, that is the main problem will be arises in in near future. Right. Therefore, okay. Uh, right okay. now, it is. Uh, I think uh, it will be not proper to okay. uh, to go for a political a political party. Right. Or who to, who will who will look, look after the uh, uh, right. Let complete, just, complete. Just, Please complete very quickly. Uh, uh, to go for a political party, that that, that uh, to go for a political party, these uh, signatories are look after for the implement the implementation oh, and uh, uh, okay. for the near, near point future. Noted. Point noted. One, one point noted. Point noted. We are running absolutely short. Your just, final comments. My final, final comments comment. is that you were asking the young gentleman what they will ask the prime minister. I will suggest uh, to them that to take up with the Prime Minister tomorrow to open a designated officer in the PMO who will see the implementation of the accord. And my request to the young gentleman and all the signatories of the accord is that I personally had seen a lot of people leaving uh, the, the BTAD districts after the disturbances have broken out to ensure that after signing of the accord there is no distressed sale of land. People are not apprehensive and they don't leave right. their land. Rather, they should be a part of the total process and add to the success of the accord. So, you, 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 are, you, are, you are not in favour of people leaving, you are in favour of an inclusive Bodo society where everybody can live in peace. So, uh, Prasenjit, 10 seconds to you, final comments. Uh, the people who suffered, uh, non-Bodo people, who suffered and who are living in camp and who are internally displaced, needed proper reparation and compensation. That has to be really part of a long-term solution and it has to be ensured. Apart from that, as there is an emphasis on reservation in employment, reservation in employment also should be extended to other tribes and other marginalized communities as well. Okay. If these things okay. are done, then the then it will be a comprehensive yeah. success. Uh, uh, enough, 10 seconds to you. Yeah, I'll just say that this new Boro Accord is a kind of a stepping stone for a new era of development in the BTR, and every everyone residing the region, whether it's a Boro or non Boro, should take the opportunities. Come forward, stay together, work together. So, Tulunga, 20 seconds to you. Is this going to be a future template for peace in the Northeast? Is the Bodo Accord going to be the future template for peace in the Northeast? Your last words, 20 seconds. Tulunga. I definitely believe so. And we are going in the right direction. Keeping in view of the territorial intricate uh, uh, already existing states, as well as with the Northeastern region and uh, India's uh, so sovereignty and integrity, uh, taking care of the national security and other uh, multilateral relations with neighboring countries of uh, India's Northeastern region. Very well said there, Tulunga. Prithviraj, last word to you. How do you think yes. the things are going to pan out in the coming days? How do you see? Step one, step two, step three. Uh, step one is that uh, since we, Tulunga and me, have been uh, driving the uh, accord and um, uh, formulating the ways out for making it a comprehensive solution, we would ensure that uh, we held good touch and good coordination with the other communities of this region as well, such that it can be an integrated society, along with the uh, safeguard of the Bodo people as well. And second, since we have been dealing the uh, issue of negotiation for peace along with the NDBS, and we have got quite an experience in this regard, we would also welcome all other uh, band outfits, rather than I won't use band, the all other struggling outfits and revolutionaries, brothers and sisters who are away from this homeland to join into the mainstream and we would be more than proud if we can especially extend our uh, 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 coordination with some of other uh, outfits or militant organizations or whatever we term as terrorist organizations within the state of Assam and Northeast as well. And in this regard, we hope that the kind guidance and the kind suggestion as well as the exposure of the very renowned media like Notice Live as well as the, it's the Wasbiru Sen will definitely be there upon us. Lots of okay, I think I think that is a very big statement that you have made that you are willing to offer your services to, to build peace, build bridges as peace efforts as far as other insurgent groups are also concerned in Assam 
I think that is a very big, uh, big statement made by you. I think this is not the last that we are going to have you on the program. Uh, both Priti Viraj and Tulunga. Let's have everybody on the screen. Priti Viraj and Tulunga. As of now, already uh, we, we are will, having we one. As of now, we are already having coordination with one more outfit, but I don't want to name it now. Okay, we will After discuss it. it works, we will dis We will dis know we are in coordination with one more outfit. Okay. You are in enjoy coordination more. with one more outfit and enjoy the visit of the Prime Minister tomorrow. Uh, and with that, I uh, end this edition of Northeast tonight. Thanks all my viewers for watching the program and my panelists, particularly the two young men from Kokrajhar, uh, from the Bodo Heartland for making their debut on Northeast tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Good night and goodbye. Northeast Tonight, brought to you by Oil India Limited, Conquering Newer Horizons.